Okay. Uh, hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking time to join us in our very first technical workshop. Um, it's a series of workshops that's going to happen uh, this week uh, as we kick off the Polkadot Hackathon North America edition. Uh, join us today is Omri, uh, who will take you through an introduction to Polkadot. And um, shortly after, he will be coming on to, to share with you a little bit more about what he has prepared in terms of content as well. Uh, but before we, uh, before I pass the time to uh, Omri, uh, basically it's just a kind of shout out for those who are out there who have yet registered for the hackathon. Um, do grab your mobile phone and scan the QR code that's out there to participate um, at the North America edition. Uh, essentially, it's actually the next stop of the global series, um, which Polkadot has been doing uh, since last year. And um, this is open not just only to folks who are in the North American region, but everyone around the globe is actually welcome to participate at the hackathon uh, essentially as well. Uh, quickly covering, uh, basically, we do have five main categories uh, for participations of which you can build a project for submission uh, during the, the phase of six weeks of hacking that we have um, starting yesterday um, on 30th of May. Uh, so they are not in any particular order, um, but I'm just going to briefly bring you through what are um, the five main categories that you can actually build for um, in terms of this hackathon. Um, first of all, if you are one that really looks at um, interfaces and experiences, um, this will be the, the, the category which you would like to submit um, your project for. Uh, essentially, it's really about getting experience in building a wide variety of interfaces and user experience um, that the chains can actually adopt. Um, second part will really be um, uh, uh, ideas um, or anything they can build with relation to a DAO um, or governance, um, which, you know, Polkadot in itself, um, it's a, a, a one great example in terms of its representations um, of DAO. Um, over here, uh, it's really about exploring ideas, including creation of new DAOs um, and necessary to tooling involved um, in this development process as well, um, you know, as well as government mechanisms uh, and palettes that you can kind of work with. The third category, uh, Web3 and tooling, essentially it's kind of a, a category that it's a coverall um, based on the other categories that, um, you know, you can't really find where you would like to submit your projects for. Uh, but essentially, it's really about looking at all kinds of toolings and applications that can be used um, to expand Web3, uh, building a better web um, that can explore use cases for open source technologies um, for a society run on peer-to-peer -peer networks, essentially. The other two categories are pretty much straightforward. Um, they are in DeFi and NFTs, uh, which is something that has been talked around town for a, a, for a while. Um, but the idea here is that, you know, if you have great ideas, um, in terms of what you could implement um, in the areas of DeFi and NFTs, you can choose to you know, submit uh, your project under this uh, category in, in itself. So apart from that, um, in terms of building on Substrate and how you can um, create an impact in the Polkadot ecosystem, uh, over here at this hackathon specifically, we have also included um, lots of ecosystem teams uh, they have actually contributed to their uh, to to challenges uh, basically their bounties of which you can take on um, something that can build onto or integrate with the projects uh, ideas that you have um, created um, for the hackathon and uh, I'm not going to run through each, um, each and every one of them but we do have lots of teams um, they're involved uh, from Macala, A-Star, Bifrost, uh, Cross Network, Equilibrium, Ice Network, Interleaf, Fala Network, Subsquid, um, RMRK, Robonomics, uh, Unique Network, uh, ZS Gist, um, SubSocial, Moonbeam, SubQuery. And for the first time ever, we do have four ecosystem teams that have kind of collaborated together. Um, SubQuery, Moonbeam, Akala, and Hydra DX uh, to kind of provide a bounty that uh, any of you can kind of subsume uh, or integrate into the main categories that you're kind of looking at as well. Um, as of now, uh, we do have a to uh, total price pool of 613,000 uh, up for grabs, um, splitting between the main category prizes and as well as the ecosystem team's challenges as well. Uh, as a brief run through, um, the category prizes, which is funded by the Polkadot Treasury, 
we will be awarded an overall winner uh, who will be which the team will be walking away with thirty thousand um of in in price uh hackathon swag box and discount for substrate runtime academy similarly um each of the category we would be actually awarding first second and third place um each walking away with twenty thousand fifteen thousand and ten thousand respectively on top of that uh, we are going to empower um, everyone in the public um to actually cast your vote of um or across all the submissions that has been made um after the submission deadline to crown basically the community choice awards and we will be awarding three teams uh which they will be walking away with five thousand each as well as if they are crowned um on community uh as a community choice um teams on top of that uh, uh together with the prize pool um individual ecosystem team challenges do have their own individual prizes which you can find um the information about that on the participants guide which you will be receiving upon registration for the hackathon itself uh quickly moving through some of the scheduled events for this week essentially um the upcoming sessions that we do have after today uh will be introduction to substrate um introduction to ink and um on polkadot.js where you can build the apps um using substrate connect like clients as well and this will be um happening in consecutive in consecutively the next three days um at the same time we are also introducing a second round of virtual networking and team formation that will take place on 2nd of june um at 8 pm pst or 11 pm edt um which is also happening on getter town uh this information uh, can actually be found on the hackathon calendar which you can save um and can get access to save the calendar via the participants guide but if not the email that will be sent to you the moment you have registered for the hackathon uh we do have ecosystem workshops happening all the way to 18th of june as well uh, starting tomorrow and uh, similarly mental office hours um, that's going to happen as well uh for the for this hackathon itself we are also introducing a in-person uh, meetup uh it, it's called the polka dot hacker house uh, which will be happening on june 23rd to 28th um, in brooklyn new york city um, if you have not already done so, uh, you can actually grab your mobile phone and scan the QR code to register your interest today. Um, uh, just to let you know that we do have limited number of seats at the Hacker House. So uh, do register your interest ahead of time, which will get you uh, get contacted um, with you to confirm your attendance in a week or two uh, as we make uh, all the arrangements for the Hacker House as well. So without further ado, I'm going to pass the time to Andre uh, to touch on introduction to Polkadot. Uh, Andre, the stage is yours. I think you're on mute. Classic. What's up, hackers? Uh, thank you, Justin, for all that info. Uh, my name is Emre. I'll be sharing my a uh, screen with you to talk to you about polka dots. Um, what is it? Uh, voila. All right. So um, this is an introduction to polka dots. Uh, my name is Emre. I'm a technical educator at the Web3 Foundation. Uh, all right. Yeah, let's just dive right in. So. First, I'd like to tell, tell you about the philosophy behind the Web3 Foundation. Uh, it's the belief in a decentralized and fair internet where the participants own their own data, identity, and therefore destiny. So all the protocols that uh, Web3 Foundation, uh, along with Parity, are building, which are like Polkadot, Kusama, uh, the Substrate Framework, these are all kind of based on this philosophy. Uh, our founders are uh, Dr. Gavin Wood, Robert and Bjorn. Uh, Gavin is uh, one of the co-founders of Ethereum uh, and CTO of Ethereum back in the day before he started Polkadot along with Robert and Bjorn. Um, and uh, they're all mostly hacking away. Bjorn is the communications officer, the chief communications officer. Uh, so this overview um, of Polkadot is this uh, idea of a interoperability chain. Uh, this layer zero foundational blockchain that are comprised of heterogeneous chains 
uh, that connects uh, together through the uh, Polkadot uh, uh, ecosystem and uh, therefore take advantage of uh, pooled security and interoperability. This is a somewhat of a new paradigm, a new generation of blockchain. Uh, before this type of architecture, blockchains were you know, separate, kind of isolated networks that couldn't speak with one another or they had to have kind of custom bridges. Polkadot is trying to create an ecosystem of uh, these connected uh, heterogeneous, meaning they're not, uh, they don't care about the, the, the main chain doesn't really care about the consensus mechanisms of the connected chains uh, as long as they are uh, looking to connect to Polkadot and interoperate with other uh, uh, pair chains. So we'll dig into what the pair chains are. So why Polkadot? Why this layer zero heterogeneous uh, chain? Mainly the interoperability, interoperability part is super important. Because of these isolated networks, uh, bringing all those blockchains together you're going to start to have an ecosystem of different types of blockchains that you, uh, developers can build on top of. The pooled security is also a new paradigm. Before you had to develop your own network that had to get to a certain network, um, <clears throat> that had to get to a certain network threshold to be considered secure and, and, and usable. Uh, pooled security allows for new ideas to be able to be developed quickly and connect to the Polkadot ecosystem and therefore have the same security that an already developed uh, network would have. So this is incredible for testing out new ideas. The heterogeneous chain uh, idea is this connected chains can have their own consensus mechanisms that they roll out based on their application needs. Um, if you think about Ethereum, if you have an ERC20 token on Ethereum, you have to buy into Ethereum's design system and Ethereum's consensus mechanism. So, and even uh, the throughput of Ethereum's nodes will affect your uh, ERC20 smart contracts. Let's say that there's some NFT release on another, uh, uh, an NFT release that has nothing to do with your ERC20 smart contract. That throughput of the NFT release will therefore impact your smart contracts uh, uh, transaction fees. With the heterogeneous chain model, uh, this sharding model, uh, that is not kind of a problem to worry about. And one of the most important parts of Polkadot, this on-chain governance, giving the power of the dot, the token holders, giving the, giving the token holders the power of the decisions that are being made on how the runtimes get updated and how the uh, code gets changed on uh, that fun uh, that the functionality of the chain, how that how those runtime updates get uh, changed, goes through an on-chain governance where the dot token holders can participate. Before this, uh, it was kind of on the developers' end of things. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, there is no on-chain governance that you know uh, the code changes has to go through. So this is an incredibly powerful form of uh, equitable uh, token uh, 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 functionality. So these are kind of like the main uh, driving points of Polkadot. The Polkadot architecture uh, is quite complex and scalable. This relay chain, which is the central chain, the main chain you can think of, allows for different pair chains to connect to it. The main chain blocks holds pair chain information as well as the tokenomics of the dot token. Uh, so the validators of the relay chain uh, are going to be validating blocks for the relay chain. And then the pair chains can also have their own validators. Uh, these are called collators that are going to be interacting with the relay chain validators and therefore synchronizing the pair chains with the relay chain. Uh, there can be different ways to connect to this relay chain. Pair chains are uh, the main format that we're seeing. There are also pair of threads. If you don't have to be a whole uh, blockchain for your application, a uh, pair of thread is not a per block basis uh, connection. It's uh, if you have something of more of a lighter application, a pair, pair of thread, pair of thread may, may be a little bit more useful for you. Or bridges. So already existing uh, blockchains could bridge to the Polkadot relay chain. 
They don't have to be a pair chain or a pair thread. These are things like uh, Bitcoin um, or any other type of, let's say, threshold cryptography chain uh, that's being developed on the side that wants to take advantage of the ecosystem that Polkadot is uh, enabling. So this communication, uh, this interoperability part is mainly deri uh, 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 allowed by the cross consensus messaging format. So the XCM is a format of uh, how the messages should be structured uh, and the, the rules of the messaging uh, are defined in this protocol, in this format protocol. It's asynchronous, meaning that it's non-blocking it's absolute, meaning that every single message will be delivered. It's asymmetric, meaning that messages that are delivered won't have uh, by default some sort of a notification saying that the message has been delivered, unless that's a part of the functionality that you want that you can code into your uh, XCM implementation. And it's also agnostic about the uh, consensus mechanism of the sender and the receiver. Uh, it doesn't really care about uh, those type of things. The XCVM allows for further uh, configuration of the XCM format uh, in terms of uh, modifying how you want to interact with XCM messages. Uh, if you have some sort of application specific uh, ways to handle messages, or uh, if you have kind of more complex messages, you can use this virtual machine to program your XCM implementation further than just what we would get out of the box. XCMP, on the other hand, cross-chain message passing, is the actual messaging mechanism. Uh, so XCMP will not put uh, messages on the relay chain, uh, only a hash of the message uh, on the inbound and the outbound queue. Current version of uh, XCMP uh, doesn't, currently the XCM version on Polkadot is version two, and it does not have the XCMP implementation. There is a HRMP or what we call XCMP Lite implemented right now. That is, uh, we're seeing new channels open up for this type of communication, uh, which is a little bit more computationally heavy uh, as XCMP is being developed, HRMP is being used. It does directly put messages on the relay chain for now. So the HRMP will uh, utilize the relay chain to send the messages from parachain to parachain. Uh, in the future, the XCMP implementation will allow for parachain to parachain message passing. So speaking of parachains, becoming a parachain, this is a really important part of uh, the Polkadot architecture and kind of ideology. So parachains uh, is a little bit of a different way. Uh, there's a, a barrier to entry for uh, parachains to become a part of the relay chain. They have to go through an auctioning process. So every two weeks, a new slot opens up for parachains on the relay chain. Uh, and this is uh, run as a candle auction. A candle auction uh, is something that was developed uh, a few centuries ago to create an auction where the ending period was not uh, known to the people participating in the auction, uh, meaning when the candle uh, went out. This, uh, this, this uh, creates an environment where auctions that uh, don't have type of the sniping uh, uh, functionality, such as eBay auctions. Uh, and on top of that, uh, after the ending period uh, in Polkadot, the, uh, the, winning, the winner of the auction uh, during the candle auction is decided retrospectively using a randomness function. So uh, the winning uh, parachain doesn't really know uh, where it will win, in which block it will win. Uh, that's why this creates an incentive for parachains to bid as soon as possible, as much as possible, and as often as possible, uh, creating kind of a more fair auction uh, mechanism. The auctions uh, require dot to be locked up by the parachain teams. Uh, those dots are not sent anywhere, but they remain in the account of the parachain teams. Uh, however, they won't, they will become non-transferable and non-stakeable. So the auctions are uh, how parachain teams can become a part of uh, the, uh, uh, the connected to the relay chain. 
However, they can increase their chances of winning the auction by running crowd loans. Uh, crowd loans, in you know, uh, in a in a way to think about it, is a immense improvement to say the 2017 ICO model. Crowd loans are a way for fundraising. Uh, parachain teams can run crowd loans in conjunction to the auctions that they're trying to win, where supporters of the parachains could uh, also lock up their dot in support of the parachain, and then that crowd loan value can be used to win auction slots. Uh, the way that this makes it an immense improvement to the 2017 ICO model, where you would just pass your token off to some random address and hope uh, that you see uh, some sort of a, uh, you know, interaction from the uh, team that you sent your tokens to uh, with no guarantees of getting it back is actually uh, locked up inside of the relay chain. So the dot that you uh, use to participate in crowd loans to show support to parachain teams is locked in the relay chain and will actually get returned to you at the end of the auction slot. So those auction slots also have end dates uh, parachain teams will continually have to win uh, new slots when the lease periods are over. So uh, this is uh, inc incredible in a way uh, that your support will get returned to you. Uh, awesome. So parachain teams utilize this crowd loan functionality, functionality to win their slots. A common misconception also is that you have to be a parachain to run a project on Polkadot. This is only true. Uh, uh, you must win a parachain slot. This is only true if you are a parachain or a pair thread. Um, other projects that can run on parachains using parachain functionality, so using the existing parachains, you can develop applications uh, or UIs, uh, or you know, if you want to have some sort of smart contract functionality, there are multiple options for you to use. Uh, one of the upcoming workshops is going to be on Inc which is a smart contract uh, uh, format. Uh, there's also ways to interact with uh, Ethereum virtual machine uh, palette. So some uh, parachains have the EVM palette. So you can run your Solidity smart contracts on the Polkadot ecosystem. And there's also Wasm smart contracts as well. Um, so there's multiple ways to interact with the Polkadot ecosystem. It's not, uh, especially when it comes to doing um, smart contract development. However, one thing to remember is that Polkadot is not a smart contract platform. Uh, it's more of kind of an economy and ecosystem of uh, blockchains. Okay, so building on Polkadot, this is kind of where it's getting important for you guys. Um, you can do a bunch of different things, especially when you're thinking about your uh, how you're going to be building your app at the Sackathon. Uh, you know, you can go from the parachain route. You could develop a parachain uh, where you define your uh, consensus model, uh, how people can participate on, uh, on your on-chain governance, what your token looks like. You could also do uh, a pair thread um, where, uh, you know, the lower barriers to entry for your application to the ecosystem. You can also uh, build a independent uh, chain that is uh, that doesn't necessarily uh, have to be a part of the uh, pair chain paradigm. It could just be a bridge uh, to Polkadot. Or you could go towards the smart contract development route. Um, you can have uh, uh, you know interact with one of the pair chains that exist with the EVM palette, or use Ink uh, to develop smart contracts. Um, you know, you could also be a few of the bounties, I believe, are just UIs on top of all of these things. You don't even have to uh, use Substrate. Uh, so there's a lot of ways to interact with the platform, and there's a lot of need for all types of different things. So uh, it's important to get creative. One of the most important parts of the Polkadot ecosystem is uh, its canary network, Kusama. Kusama is slowly becoming its own full-fledged network. Uh, in the beginning, it was developed as a place to uh, test the game theoretic tokenomics um, in a environment that has real value. So it's a real value bearing network 
where ideas first like to be ran before they are audited uh, there and made sure that they work correctly before going on to Polkadot. Uh, some teams are actually starting to choose just to stay on Kusama uh, due to its uh, culture and uh, it's a sped up environment. It's pretty much the same code uh, as Polkadot. However, things happen uh, faster on Kusama. So uh, it's a little bit of a different uh, 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 environment. Uh, however, there's the KSM token uh, that is its own economic environment. Um, and there's also test networks, uh, such as West End for uh, Polkadot, uh, where you can, uh, or Rococo test network, uh, which is going through a revamp. All of these things are there for you to develop um, applications around these uh, uh, ecosystems. So speaking of ecosystems, what is going on in the Polkadot and Kusama ecosystems? So there's a bunch of chains uh, that are participating in this uh, in these ecosystems. Uh, there's a lot of APIs, a lot of tools and services that are being developed to uh, make the development and interaction with this ecosystem easier. A uh, bunch of production networks are being launched, especially, so these are uh, on Polkadot, uh, pair chains are have been running for a little while now and it's been a little over a month since xcm was released on polkadot so you're starting to see interoperability happen between these uh applications um and there's uh quite a bit of money flowing into the ecosystem not to mention that the polkadot ecosystem is currently second to the ethereum ecosystem in terms of uh, developer uh counts so the ecosystem is growing uh, quite rapidly. Lots of substrate-based chains. And you know, if you don't know what substrate is, we'll talk about it. Uh, there is a workshop on it tomorrow that's going to go in depth, but I'll do a small high-level overview of it. Um, a lot of DeFi, NFTs, uh, gaming, smart contract development, identity, privacy, bridges, IoT. So all of these uh, pair chains um, are, uh, their own full-fledged networks that are running uh, by connecting to uh, either Polkadot or Kusama. Um, what the coolest part is, is, and I'll talk a little bit more, more about this, but the ability to start composing these apps to actually create uh, decentralized applications. Uh, so these are just kind of like small parts of a larger application. You can think about it in a way. Um, and you can start you know, creating really complex, useful applications just by seeing these pair chains ra uh, as, as rather than applications themselves as protocols for doing certain things for your application. There's a uh, quite a bit of APIs, tools, and services in the ecosystem that you can use during this hackathon uh, to make your job easier, um, uh, such as scanners, uh, UIs ways to you know uh, have, uh, wallets so these are uh, things that exist but also do remember that uh, even though they exist all of these things could also be improved um so just because there are a bunch of wallets out there shouldn't dissuade you from you know making uh, a better ui for a wallet so also, there's a bunch of uh, programs around the ecosystem, such as the Substrate Builders program uh, that directly supports your project. So also keep in mind that these projects that you're building are great starting points for uh, taking it further uh, to make them fully fledged uh, applications or pair chains or UIs. Uh, this, is, uh, this hackathon uh, is kind of like a jump starter for these. Uh, if you think you have a really good idea, Post hackathon, there's a lot of programs for you to participate in and uh, take your idea to the next step. Um, so the Substrate Builders program, for example, has a few different tracks depending on the type of thing that you want to build. If you're building a pair chain or something that's uh, infrastructure related, or if it's just the application. Also, the Web3 Foundation has uh, grants. Do remember that. Uh, we're always looking for great ideas to fund through the grants program. 
there are different le levels of grants uh, depending on your application. You would have to go through a um, uh, process for applying, and uh, uh, you know, once you are done with the hackathon, based on what you have, uh, you can draft up something to uh, submit to the grants program to actually continue your idea. And then also there's the on-chain treasury, uh, a form of funding that's fully on-chain. Uh, your proposal goes through a governance uh, process. Uh, and if the DOT token holders, uh, the community sees your idea as a something uh, worthwhile for the on-chain uh, funding, you can also go for uh, funding through the treasury that's on-chain. There's also accelerators and incubators. If you think that you still need help with your uh, projects, uh, there are bootcamp style uh, learning programs. Uh, there are kind of, uh, for example, Polkadot Basecamp uh, ran by Outlier Ventures has a monthly meeting in which you could uh, you know, uh, start getting feedback on your ideas, uh, getting more involved in the community, uh, developing your idea further. Uh, or the Polkadot DeFi Alliance Accelerator Program. Uh, you know, these are the things that are uh, quite available and are looking for great uh, applications to be a part of them. So quick little high-level overview over Substrate because you can't have an intro to Polkadot unless you talk about the framework that it's built on. Substrate is a framework. Think about how React is a framework for building UIs. Substrate is a framework for building blockchains. It's taken a lot of uh, the uh, common parts of blockchains that, you know, it's been over a decade now of uh, blockchains being around uh, and turning them into modular parts that you can use kind of like Lego pieces to start developing your uh, ideas. So these are called frame palettes and they are modules that include specific parts of the blockchain functionality. You can uh, include some, all, or a few, uh, depending on what you're trying to do. You can also create your own palettes. If there's something that doesn't exist that uh, you require for your application, uh, there are, uh, you know, you can develop your own uh, palette that has your own unique functionality. Substrate is built uh, in a modular uh, way that has uh, on-chain governance as a core part of it. Um, it, you can program your tokens uh, using these palettes, and it has uh, seamless integration with the Polkadot e ecosystem. Um, what's important about these substrate, uh, what the, the substrate framework, is uh, also some of the, one thing to think. For example, is how to as a as a developer building on substrate you'll be thinking about how to uh, develop your transaction fees because transaction fees work differently in Substrate uh, versus something like a smart contract platform. Uh, the runtime developer actually decides on the uh, transaction fee by running benchmarks on the functionality of your uh, blockchain. And those benchmarks are then deployed into the runtime. So you have a transaction uh, fee uh, that is a baseline. Uh, there are idea of uh, the ideas of tips uh, to increase uh, the importance of your transaction uh, over the baseline uh, fee limit. Uh, it's uh, it has a bunch of uh, benefits for longevity. If uh, new kind of paradigms arise in the consensus world and you have a substrate based chain, uh, your consensus mechanism is comprised of a few modular pieces that you can plug in and out. So if there is a, let's say, a better finality mechanism that comes out, um, you know, this uh, architecture makes it really easy for you to be um, kind of future proof in your uh, in the way that you develop your blockchain. Uh, so it's like kind of a whole new paradigm of uh, developing blockchains. Uh, it's uh, extremely scalable. Um, you know, transaction fees, when we talk about transaction fees, the main question ends up becoming, you know, what type of transaction? Uh, if it's just a financial transaction, you know, uh, uh, capabilities go uh, anywhere uh, from like 1,500 transactions 
to some very high numbers that um, off the top of my head, I don't remember, but in theory exists. Uh, substrate enables uh, kind of the sharding where you can spin up new uh, instances horizontally. So the scalability of it is uh, quite uh, thought out and uh, thorough. Uh, and it's also uh, written in Rust, which is a systems level language that has, um, I guess, you know, you can think about it as uh, it's performant as, let's say, C, but also gives you uh, control over its uh, memory management, something like Java. Um, it has a beautiful developer ecosystem and has been uh, kind of steadily on the rise to be one of the, uh, if not the top development uh, uh, programming language since, I think, 2016. Um, so combined with that, the runtime for substrate-based chains uh, compile into WASM, so WebAssembly, meaning that uh, you can uh, run this runtime on any type of machine. Uh, so essentially, all of these things allow you to uh, have a scalable, future-proof uh, blockchain uh, ecosystem in which uh, you know your portions of your chain are modularized and interchangeable and upgradable. So uh, because these runtime upgrades are just these uh, WASM binaries, uh, this idea of runtime upgrades being forkless uh, is a part of uh, Substrate. So forkless upgrades are uh, extremely important uh, because your runtime upgrades will be going through a on-chain governance uh, and the on-chain governance uh, proposal uh, will have the runtime upgrade in as a WASM blob. Uh, and if it passes uh, on-chain governance, that runtime uh, will be included in one of the upcoming blocks. And as soon as that block is added to the canonical chain, the runtime will be up upgraded. There's no more messy forks uh, happening. So uh, this is extremely powerful. Um, and you can also, you know, customize the governance uh, process for your runtime upgrades uh, because the governance is just a collection of pallets as well. Um, again, you know, Substrate is resilient and robust, uh, meaning that, uh, especially due to some of the functionalities of uh, Rust and how it handles uh, errors, and uh, the consensus mechanism can be replaced uh, as new things come along. It's, uh, again, kind of this future-proof uh, way of doing things. Uh, it's not just a out-of-the-box, this is the design, and this is what you have to buy into. It's extremely uh, uh, interchangeable and customizable. So uh, Substrate has that kind of rich ecosystem, uh, APIs, tools, everything that you can use to deploy, monitor uh, your applications. Awesome. So with that being said, uh, I want to kind of uh, switch back to the um, stop sharing my screen and answer any questions that we have. Let's see here. I see Igor has a question. What ecosystem team is best to choose for kind of Dex video streaming solution? with incentives for watching? So it sounds like you're trying to build a decentralized exchange for video streaming solution. Yeah, I think um, you will have to clarify that question. I'm not sure I understand. Um, what are some examples of projects you can build, you could build with Substrate for this hackathon? Yeah, so anything from, uh, a, a pair chain uh, to um, a standalone blockchain that's going to bridge to Ethereum, uh, excuse me, to Polkadot, um, can be built. Again, uh, look at the, uh, uh, the hackathon uh, guidelines for uh, especially like the bounties and what they're looking for in, in order to make sure that you can 
kind of uh, create a box around your idea so that you don't get um, too overwhelmed. I think that's probably going to be really important for everyone here. Uh, these are large scale ideas and this is a hackathon that's uh, you know a finite short amount. Uh, do your best to try and uh, create uh, reasonable, uh, achievable uh, goals. Um, and again, you know, your idea doesn't have to be running on production by the end of the hackathon. This hackathon is a way to uh, uh, kind of kickstart the idea, uh, get something that's maybe a proof of concept or a most viable product, a uh, basic working model. And then you have all of these um, uh, programs and education kind of avenues that you can go post hackathon. Um, yeah. This stream will be available to watch after it ends on the YouTube page and in this link as well, the same link that you're on. What happens if you start building dApps on their one that won a pair chain and it loses the next round of pair chain auction? Uh, by default, they be, you know they won't be kicked off the system. By default, pair chains uh, will be uh, are already pair of threads, um, <clears throat> so uh, they will still be a part of the ecosystem, uh, and they can try to win another uh, upcoming pair chain auction. Uh, most bear chain slots on Polkadot are around two years. So this is uh, going to be interesting to see. But also I would like uh, to implore you to think about it in a way that um, useful pair chains that have proven themselves to their community and to the ecosystem as useful um, will likely uh, easily win uh, pair chain slots. Um, and it's uh, usually the uh, they will start participating in auctions before uh, their uh, slot ending period is over. So they will kind of um, look to win auctions ahead of time. Left side bottom slide is not fully visible. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not sure which slide that was, but I will look back at the uh, presentation later. Is it possible to push PR for different projects and bounties during this hackathon? Um, again, I think look at the hackathon um, guidelines, but I don't see why not. Uh, but don't quote me on that. Can a development team build an application and use multiple parachain backends without owning a parachain? For example, using Akala for the exchange and Kilt for identification without being a parachain owner themselves. Absolutely. Um, I mean, that's exactly the definition of composing different parachains to develop decentralized applications. Um, ways to interact with Akala and Kilt uh, might be different. So uh, RPC calls or depending on if they have their own APIs for on their own on-chain data, uh, you might just uh, use those uh, or the Polkadot.js API, um, which is used, uh, which has, uh, you can use as a data layer for your application. In theory, you could just develop um, a JavaScript front end uh, that uses uh, the Polkadot.js API to do something useful for the ecosystem. These are all within, um, within, uh, not legal grounds, but you know, uh, expected kind of uh, ways to um, interact in this hackathon. Can we communicate from a public parachain to a private parachain using XCM? Uh, good question. So XCM uh, doesn't care about if the uh, parachain is public or private. It's just a message format. Um, so the way that the message will be structured. As long as those pair chains have implemented uh, XCM uh, into their runtime, then yes, that's possible. 
All right. I'm also looking for more questions in the chat. Could we have the slides? Um, yeah, I will try to see what the best way to provide these slides would be. Um, so stay tuned. If you and answer, I sum is asking if you and answer, is there a support for kilt in polka dot to insert with? Um, so I would check the kilt uh, documentation. Uh, you can, I'm sure you can use the polka.js API uh, to get some kilt data uh, to your app uh, to develop something. Um, unless kilt has their uh, you know own way of uh, interacting, uh, or maybe they have like their own data layer that you could use. Obviously, like a big part of hackathons is reading a lot of documentation. And what you'll see is each pair chain uh, team has uh, different, different levels of documentation. Um, so the first couple of days are probably really important to make sure you choose uh, projects that have what you need to deliver uh, your idea. This would mean, you know, documentation, uh, some way to interact with that uh, pair chains data. Um, I would personally always uh, see what I can do with the polka.js uh, suites. Uh, so the API, uh, the extension, uh, there's also uh, boilerplate code for uh, running substrate front end and node. I believe this will be kind of uh, talked about in detail tomorrow at the substrate intro to substrate workshop. So, uh, you know, there's some code out there that's already usable to start spinning up a substrate node uh, where you can just start uh, pulling in pallets and start uh, messing around with the runtimes. Uh, that is if that's what you want to do. Um, And also, if you're in uh, New York, um, there will be a team of us there uh, to help you out in person. Uh, would love to meet any of you. So come say hi uh, and uh, show us your idea. And we will uh, mentor you and make sure that uh, you're being uh, given the right information. There you go. Uh, how are we doing with uh, questions, Embry? I believe we are done with all the questions. Uh, so Alex is asking where in New York. Uh, that would be in Brooklyn. In yeah. uh, It's called Industry City. Um, and Embry, you were actually the only person that I know that has visited the site. So uh, should we be excited about it? Uh, the site is amazing. Uh, it's, you know, has a beautiful view of the city. It's kind of like this one big loft, so it's going to be couches and tables where you can interact with each other. Um, and it's a part of this really cool complex. Uh, it's kind of like this up and coming part of Brooklyn. So. Awesome, yeah. The point cool. of the Hacker House is what exactly Andrew mentioned to basically get people together, to hack together, to learn together. There's gonna to be workshops, um, stuff like uh, similar to what uh, Embra delivered, uh, similar to what we've got uh, planned for the next couple of weeks as well, um, but potentially with a different focus and so on. But really, the idea is to get FaceTime with people, right? So that we uh, actually get to interact with each other and, and get to know each other. <clears throat> so I think I see one more question. Um, 
<clears throat> I was wondering what the max speed is currently for parachains, and is there a limit speed for TPS in the future for parachains? This, this yeah. is for you. <laughs> Good question. Um, so tr transaction per second depends on a chain like Polkadot. Not each transaction is not uh, equal. So because there are function calls involved that are called extrinsics, uh, the uh, transaction per second would be different uh, for different types of transactions. There have been certain numbers floating out, out there that Polkadot's architecture can support up to kind of like 100,000 transactions per second. We're definitely not there. Uh, however, you know, anywhere from like 800 to 1500 transactions transactions per second could be you know like a good uh window that you can think about when you're developing with substrate cool awesome thank you i did actually not know that you know that so <laughs> it's awesome um maybe one thing that i wanted to mention as um, i was listening into embray's uh, presentation um embray you spoke a lot about uh, you know, Polkadot, the architecture, and obviously a lot of substrate comes in and Rust development and, and so on. Oh, there's an echo. All right, so um, you should see, you should hear me. You're on mute now. You're on mute, Urban. I'm so curious about what he was saying. I think he said something along the lines of, I know, hang on. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I was saying before that, I wonder what he was about to say. Yeah. <laughs> but um, well, well, probably Urban get, get, um, <laughs> get behind his mute button. Uh, I, I, I think it's just kind of um, emphasize, or, um, uh, again, basically the Hacker House. And essentially, it's, it's in-person meetup um, where we would like to meet, um, you know, folks who are actually building for the hackathon to actually be in person. Um, the objective here is really that, you know, we do have a couple of mentors who will be on site um, to help you along um, in this six days of, um, you know, partial hacking. And we do like we do have lined up some um, workshops and networking to kind of get people together. Um, and the really objective here is really to break through, you know, all, all this uh, virtual fatigue that we kind of face uh, as, you know, for the past two and, a half, uh, two and a half years as well. Um, you know, it's really exciting uh, for the team uh, at Polkadot to really meet uh, every one of you. Uh, we do have ecosystem teams. They are going to be there as well, similarly to guide you along um, whatever that you're building, you know, or, or, or that you're kind of building at the same time as well. Um, you know, for folks who are still kind of um, not yet registered, uh, probably just take this opportunity to kind of fill time and kind of call for registration for the hackathon. Uh, essentially, this registration will be an entry ticket for lots of things um, that has been lined up and prepared for participants of the hackathon, um, of course, to qualify for the prizes. But more essentially, um, there, there is actually a curated list of documentations that is prepared um, in the participants guide uh, that has been readily uh, uh, prepared for all the participants uh, at the hackathon. Uh, essentially, anything from who your mentors are um, in mentor booking form uh, to secure your slots with the mentors um, that have availed their time, uh, all the way to any documentations with regards to the Polkadot, Kusama ecosystem and Substrate itself, um, and essentially uh, any other information about the hackathon from you know even submission criteria, artifacts, and all are just going to be up there as well. But I, but I think um, on top of that, the next two important steps will really be to join the Polkadot Discord server. Um, there is a hackathon channel where, 
you know, um, announcements will be made. Uh, folks who are actually finding teams will be able to, um, you know, make introductions and find people that you want in your team um, as part of the team formation process. Uh, similarly, all the mentors are going to be on the Discord server as well, where you can ask your questions. And last but not least, um, a hackathon calendar has actually been prepared. Um, essentially, we have lined up lots of workshops, lots of mental office hours, and you know, hackathon calendar will be the best way for you to ensure that you don't miss out any of the sessions. Um, and knowing who is actually available for the um, mental office hours um, as well. Um, quick recap, uh, this is going to be six weeks long, um, as uh, uh, Amri just mentioned earlier on. Essentially, this week will really be about looking at and ideating what you would like to build for the hackathon. While we have five main categories um, that you can select for submissions, um, you can also take a look at the ecosystem teams challenges that, they, that you know various teams have put out for bounties, where you can look at to integrate. Um, the idea here is really to not to limit what you can build, but rather to explore um, the possibilities that's out there. Uh, it could be something that's completely new, or it can be something um, that you know you kind of want to improve on and um, make it even better as it is um, based on the various categories that we have up in line as well. So just a quick recap on what has been lined up, uh, more specifically for this week. Um, tomorrow, we do have a session on introduction to Substrate, uh, of which we will dive in a lot deeper about what Substrate is about, um, followed by an introduction to Inc. Uh, and a session that's going to talk a little bit more about Polkadot.js. Uh, other than that, uh, for those who have missed out a virtual networking session that took place yesterday, um, we have a second run of it that's going to happen on 2nd of June, uh, 8 p.m. PST or, uh, or 11 uh, p.m. EDT whichever you are based at, uh, this will be the time. Uh, more information will also be found on the hackathon uh, calendar as well. And you know the access link and everything will all be made available accordingly. Uh, last but not least, uh, just uh, the rest of the sessions is going to take place um, throughout the hackathon process. Uh, do take note of them uh, and you know, we will just kind of see you accordingly as well. Uh, lastly, we uh, Urban and team have actually prepared uh, a curated modules um, that essentially will help you get started also on the Polkadot ecosystem. Uh, part of the things that uh, Omri have actually covered will also be covered in the Polkadot pathway modules that has been curated for the North America edition. Uh, over here, it's just an opportunity for you to understand uh, on a deeper level what Polkadot system uh, ecosystem would be um, in kind of like a step step by step uh, modules that has been prepared. Um, you can you can also rack up points where top hundred scorers towards the end of the hackathon will kind of get yourself a Polkadot swag tee. Um, if you have not already known, a uh, Polkadot kind of have kind of rebranded uh, a while back. Um, so in terms of this um, these design and all, they did kind of have a refresh. So for those who um, would like to kind of have a collection of uh, Polkadot Swag T-shirt, this is also an opportunity for you to do so. So if you have not already created an account or if you already have, um, this QR code essentially will bring you to the North American edition uh, modules that's actually made readily available for every one of you. Um, so not too sure if Urban will come back on, uh, but essentially uh, two main people that you can reach out to. Uh, my name is Justin, uh, and this is my email and my Discord ID, and you can reach out to Urban similarly as well if, if you have any questions with regards to the hackathon. Uh, of course, if there are, are more ecosystem-related questions, um, you can actually go to the ecosystem technical channel. Uh, that is on the hack Polkadot Discord server as well. Um, and you know, you can reach out to the relevant parties, um, especially if you're kind of exploring how integrations can kind of work uh, by using some of the parachains, for example, or any of the bounties that's been set up for the ecosystem teams as well. So um, probably just an opportunity for Ombre for any last words, um, but it also for Urban to kind of chime in if he has something to kind of wrap up as well. Amri, um, any last, last words before we end the session? Um, yeah, so good luck, everyone. 
uh, I will, uh, you know, like I said, I'll be in New York. Uh, if not, you can find me on Matrix or here's my Twitter handle. If you have any ideas that you want to run by me, happy to help. Um, and yeah, you know, I'm very excited to see the uh, final results of your projects. Thank you. So, um, as most of the questions have asked, uh, this session will also be made available after we have ended on this crowdcast link that you are watching uh, the live stream. Uh, but if not, you'd like to visit it another another day, you can uh, go by Angel Hacks or Polkadot's YouTube uh, channel. Uh, we do post um, the recording of today's session as well for you to revisit any of the content, more specifically shared by Omri um, in today's uh, introduction to Polkadot as well. Other than that, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, happy hacking and we'll see you in tomorrow's session.